Okay. Have you heard anything from them people on um from the applicants on um Lock Street? Um they are um he's hired a contractor, they're going to do selective um demolition on the interior and I think remove some of the rear siding. Okay. Yes, yes, boy. Mm -hmm. So we'll set some, once I um, have that information uh, and they're all set to go, we'll set something, um, we'll set up a site for that. Okay. All right. Um, Cause I, I did reach out to him. I hadn't heard anything um, from Ron and mm -hmm. I reached out and he um, last week, or the week before he had emailed me to let me know that they had hired someone. Okay. Yeah. Is Norm is Norman on the phone? Norman's here. Hi, Norman. How are you? How are you? I'm glad to hear you. <laughs> you doing all right? Um, well, I wouldn't say so. I'm hanging in there. That's all that's 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 more that's real important. Hanging in there. Yep. Yeah, that's what we're all doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, we have a full complement here, I believe, so we can get started with our meeting. Um, this is a uh, regularly scheduled uh, public meeting of the Historic Resources Commission for the City of Albany. Um, we have uh, one item on the agenda. Um, in attendance this evening, we have Commissioner Hacker, Commissioner Garrity, Commissioner uh, Kaplan, Commissioner Tobin, Commissioner Pinckney, Commissioner Rice, Commissioner um, McEnany, um, Aaron Glennon from the Planning Office, and Amy Levine from the Law Department representing our interests. Um, we have one item on the agenda. There will be an opportunity for public comment um, at a designated time during the uh, discussion. Um, and um, we would just ask that anyone from the public who has a comment, keep their uh, comments to the uh, matter of hand and limit their comments to three minutes in duration. Um, without any Further ado, we can uh, proceed into the, uh, the discussion. This is a return visit for 191 North Pearl Street in the Clinton Avenue, North Pearl, Clinton Square Historic District. And uh, this is a uh, concept review um, based on the comments that were received a few weeks ago at an HRC meeting uh, the applicant has returned with some adjustments to the, the design for our consideration. There's no action taken uh, on this matter this evening because it is still before the planning board and uh, the seeker process. But uh, we look forward to uh, the owner and Danny Sanders' presentation. Did we lose Danny? Yep. No, I'm here. Okay. Um, I didn't know, Aaron, if you wanted to say anything or besides that, moving forward, or I can just present our modifications and changes since the last meeting. Yeah, I think, um, you know, John covered it. Um, for tonight, there's no um, action needed. Uh, Danny has supplied a number of new um drawings that reflect modifications made since the previous meeting. Um, and so Danny, I don't know if you wanna just yep. briefly go started. over. Yep. Well, thank you for the hearing tonight and also just to, um, and the input from the last meeting. Um, we did go back and uh, revise the elevation significantly in terms of uh, 
the comments. Uh, we did bring the building out to the corner as close as possible within the uh, confines of the site. I believe there is a revised site plan that's been submitted and I'll just touch base on the site plan first. Um, but sorry, Aaron, I knew that I can upset pull you, but okay. <laughs> so we can start with that. Um, so bringing the building out to the corner, the, the uh, property lines are shown. This is Dan Hirschberg's uh, presentation uh, in terms of the revised site plan. The fencing went along North Pearl Street with the elite of uh, four foot high fence um, is the company that makes it. The, you've seen that standard detail on other projects. And again, we ran it on the face of the parking um, entrance as well on Wilson. So the building coming out to the corner as close as possible. Property line is not exactly square, but the building is. Um, so we like to do them that way actually. So as far as uh, proceeding beyond that on the site plan, I think that's pretty much the concerns. Um, we can talk about, you know, the fencing um, later on, but that's pretty much the changes we made to the building location. The entranceway uh, on that site plan, we did eliminate the two-sided um, entry. Uh, so we are favoring, as you're looking at the building, the stoop, and then the steps going down to the right, uh, going south. Uh, as far as the potential for going straight out, similar to other uh, row houses on the block, it would have come out too far into the sidewalk. And I know the city uh, restrictions in terms of width. Um, I went out there myself. Um, so we would have ended up with only about a four foot clear sidewalk uh, before you got to the uh, decorative sidewalk or the pavers that are in the, in the um, stamped concrete or stamped brick. So we maintain the side um, entrance that is not, you know, unique. Uh, there are other uh, entrances that way. So we feel it still fits in with the character of the neighborhood. I think that's about it with the site, Aaron. Um, so our rendering, I'd like to start with, um, we were fortunate to get a rendering in time for the meeting tonight. And I think that really gives a sense of the building uh, character fitting in with the scale, the height, um, the nature of the corner um, in terms of addressing the corner with the uh, corner perspective and that uh, it does extend out a little bit in the ABA form of the building. You know, the, the two ends, the bookends um, are accentuated here. Um, we simplified the cornices on the corners but um, elaborated them in the center bays. And uh, we went with uh, standard uh, double hung windows throughout. Um, and then the brackets and the elaborate cornice in the center. Um, we are looking at differentiating the siding exposure from a five inch where the, what you see is like the darker gray to a seven inch in the center bays um, to further accentuate three separate buildings, but in reality, we know it's one building. So we're, we'd like some comment on that. Uh, feedback from you would be appreciated. We did uh, present a canopy at the main entrance and with a transom. And you can see that maybe a little bit better on the front renderings and, and the light, but you can see it as well. So um, that front elevation on Pearl like we talked about last time, uh, is you know, pretty much in line with the other uh, row houses north. Uh, we do have the vacant lot, and that's uh, the fencing is shown there, that vacant part, portion of our property at least. And uh, as far as the gradation of the windows, um, we did go from five foot eight opening heights up to five feet. So five foot eight, five foot four, five foot as you go from the second, as you go from the first floor up to the third um, in terms of the heights, which is in character with other historic buildings. Other than that, um, we maintained the water table height that's fairly similar in height to the uh, adjacent building, although it's not directly attached, but you can see that and that would be um, a, a stone veneer 
in the center section and then the siding going all the way down on the other end. We did accentuate again the center entrance uh, just because I think it gives it, you know, a very strong focus on the building. It's a very symmetrical facade and uh, the middle windows again for discussion or however, in terms of how they are, we kept with a two over one everywhere um, without getting too busy and mixing it up. Um, I think that's more in character than a two over two, but again, we can discuss that and put muttons in the center bay windows. We can discuss it. I just thought that it would be look okay without the muttons because it would have been fairly narrow, um, the flanking Chicago style window there with the wider um, center section. Not too much else. I mean, the other elevations were drawn. It was requested that we provide all the elevations. There's Wilson. Again, with the elite fence uh, shown stepping down as you get into the, uh, the void there is the entrance into the parking lot, of course. And then the rear elevation, we did address with adding um, a window and then of course going to the siding again uh, but there's a break, there's a jog in there. And then the north elevation we just presented, which is wrapping the main uh, bookend around and uh, having the decorative cornice maintained because that is the raised section of the building. We may end up uh, going back to that one, that's still in design phase. I would say that last elevation could use a little refinement. We may end up um, eliminating some of that block uh, and bringing the siding down, but we haven't established that line yet, but it is coming around from the other corner. So from the back. If you said uh, this is block. And then I think when you showed us the front elevation, you said was it a stone facing there? No, it'd be a stone facing. I'm sorry. Like real stone? Uh, probably in terms of dimension, it would look real stone. I can't speak to whether it's going to be block uh, or, or veneer yet. We have to price it out. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me just get clear on that. So it could be like a rock face block, or it could be a block, or it could be a full stone, or it could be a stone veneer. Right. It most likely is going to be a stone veneer. A stone veneer. Okay. And um, looking at the um, the veneer on this elevation, and then if you would, Aaron, please going back to the front elevation. Um, I think you're, yeah, it feels like you've kind of grabbed the corner, in my mind, grabbed the corner pretty well. A couple of comments um, kind of looking at this fresh. And one is that um, although the center block, the the windows are, it, it must be the center windows and the width of the center windows that makes the overall relationship of solid and voids um, and, the, and the space between the headers and the sills above kind of okay. But when I look at the flanking sections, uh, it feels like a lot of siding between, between those. So I guess that's a question of the size of the windows. I think you said that they were 5.0, but to me, um, there's something off about the proportions there. And the other comment is, since I was on a job site today and it was snowing, uh, I got snow on my mind. So I wonder back to the, um, the foundation uh, or the lowest level, if you really want that siding coming so close to grade. And I think it really shows up on that rendering and would wonder about um, some other treatment at the base, even of the flanking sections. Would you go back to that? Yeah, to the rendering, please. Yeah, right there, right there. So to me, it feels like um, some more expression of the of masonry, I guess, at the base of that corner section and or both all the flanking sections, both um, kind of because it fits in in terms of the adjacent buildings, as well as that concern about snow and ice and buildup and stuff. 
Okay, we can look at that. I mean, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the water table height of the center section. Right. Um, we could bring it up like two feet instead of. Uh, yeah, it feels like something there would would help. Yeah. In my mind, I don't know how others feel about it, but. No, I agree. There's it's a lot of siding beneath the the windows, so a a belt course there would would help alleviate some of that mass of siding. Yeah, I agree. I agree as well. Are you absolutely? Are you all talking about at the base, or what about the extent of? I, I agree. That's at the base. At the, but what about between the first and the second, and the second and the third floor windows? And maybe back to the elevation, Aaron. If you yeah, want. let's look at the front again. Yeah. Is there limitations inside that call for such a small window? Well, we've got nine. We've got nine foot ceilings. When you do the math of the five foot eight, you're at about uh, at a two foot four sill. Again, with a five foot eight right there, you're at eight foot. And to do headers, you're a foot. So that's all you, you've got. And I definitely want to have at least a foot to the ceiling. So we're not talking about 10 foot ceilings here. Nine foot. And I've got two feet for structure. So Unless I what? drop yes. the sills, which I could do. Um, again, it's always, you know, we could bring it down to like a two foot sill. Once you get too close, I don't want to go into tempered glass, of course, or anything right. like that. Right. So we can extend it a little bit, um, but I also don't think we are going to end up with six foot windows. We'll probably end up with another eight inch maximum. Uh, You're talking. Number. I. Again, on the principal floor, on the ground floor, right? On the ground floor, I'm about as high as I can be at 5'8", unless we can bring it down to a two-foot cell, and then it would be six foot. But you can go to two feet without any special glazing, right? Correct, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. I can I'll bring it down to like two feet. Right. So if we go from six foot to five five eight to five four i think you'll see a difference and it'll be appreciable if you said to me i don't care about the second and third floor differentiation and make them both five eight i can look at that you know it's four inches it's not that much but that's probably about the best we would do if we're not going to make them all the same height are we talking about the same thing that you you try and make them a little bit uh larger on the first floor and then keep them where they are on the second and third or change them by four inches minimal in some that. way so that there's something just a little bit different on the first right. floor than the two above the uh, first thing i noticed was that the uh, the clabbered was coming down to the and i think everybody caught that uh, it would be nice to get uh some kind of a, a basement effect on the bottom doesn't necessarily have to go as as high uh, to show a water table or what have you, but I think it's just too much clabbered going all the way down virtually to the uh, sidewalk. So uh, that works out great for the front. I'm not sure how that works for you when you design the, the south side on Wilson Street. Yeah, it's a little tricky, but we yeah. can step it. I mean, of course, yeah. we, it's only, we're only talking about like for instance, on the uh, east, most bay, we would just make that all stuff of a veneer. You'd make them match. That would get too busy underneath the windowsill. Would you make them match when, by the time you got onto that Wilson Street side? So if you if you brought the water table up uh, a little bit uh, to get rid of that massive amount of uh, of clabbered, right? Would they match on the two left and right? Uh, additions, which by the way, I don't think are the same size. No, they aren't. Yeah. But is that um, what you, you I mean, they're do? slightly different, but I wanted to yeah. keep the three windows there. Yeah, that's all right. Both. So in terms of stepping it, whether or not that it wraps around from Pearl to Wilson. And then again, I don't think I have to go I play around with it, but I don't think I have, I, I like the way the center bay works on Wilson mm -hmm. right now, proportionally. Yeah. So if that belt, if that course ran and then, 
and then stopped and then ran below the sill of the fourth of the basement windows as opposed to above them. I mean, you're, you're liking it making one line across pretty much on Wilson? I, I think there'd be, it, it's not a true um, symmetry there, but I think it, it might look better to- uh, Okay, let me look at that. See, see what it looks like. But yep. obviously if you, if you raise it on the Pearl Street side, you're gonna have to wrap it around and it's right. gonna match. Um, there's another thing, if we go to the front uh, uh, elevation, and it, it looks a little bit monotonous when you wind up with uh, uh, 10 matching windows and a larger one, you might consider uh, some kind of a uh, uh, parent lintel or something like that. It would go over at least the, the two center uh, uh, windows in the center section. It would break it up a little bit as far as the flow it would look less, less institutional. I'm sorry, what you said about the lintel? Just uh, cosmetically, if the middle windows, the big on ones the over the third front door. doors on the second right. and third, if right. they had something a little bit, um, I hate to use the word decorative, but a more substantial, a wider, uh, uh, a wider uh, uh, lintel on top of it, or if it might, it might break it, make it up uh, so that it's not, 10, 10 windows in a row and, and another uh, section in the middle. Okay. Not a lot, uh, not talking about a lot, just something to make it a little bit different because you've already made the centerpiece different because it's a, it's a door, it's a gracious entrance, it's got a, uh, uh, a canopy over it, et cetera. So there's, there's a consistency saying that those large windows, those triple windows uh, might, take some little treatment that would make them slightly different. Uh, but you might even have something, something else in mind, but if they looked a little bit different than the five windows to the left and the five windows to the right, uh, and I do realize that it's recessed as well, uh, but it might, it might make it interesting. Okay. I'm sorry, Jack, were you talking about a lintel above the center portion, center window at the second floor? Is yeah. that what you were? Second and third, yes. The second and third. Yeah, so they'd have some, um, yeah. something that would make them look a little bit special because they are special. Yeah. Just like the door is. I, I concur. I think that's a, that's a nice thought, especially at the second floor because you've got, again, you've got so much siding there. Yeah. Or it may or may not work. It might get too tight, but yeah, especially, especially at the second floor. Is, is the front entrance recessed, Dan? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, thought I had, that's good. To that's good. The entrance is recessed. Um, hey, how much is it recessed? A foot? Two foot? About, two, about a foot and a half, I believe I can check. It's to make it far, far enough away so you have a clear... Uh, access for the for the city sidewalk. Yeah, we tucked it in as much as we could yeah. without getting into the stairwell and the interior and making that tight. Yeah, and it does break it up in a in a way, which is which is good. Let yeah. me ask. You, let me ask. You, um, the corner projections. Uh, how much is that? How much of the corner is projected from the center base? A foot. The, the overhangs in terms no, of the side? No, the corner, the corner blocks, the dark gray um, construction. Almost two feet. Huh, two feet? Foot, foot, one foot eight, I think it is. Can you make I, it I'll an check. extra foot? Can you, would, making it an extra foot, would that, de, would that really screw up your floor plan? I just think it's too boxy. The entire mass is too boxy. If you were to um project or recede those center blocks a little bit more it would just add some interest to the to the elevation might also to, mean more siding to the wilson to the wilson street and north pearl elevations you could recover any land any space you lost by making the uh, uh 
corner on the uh, on the east side, just as deep as the corner on the left side that juts out from the uh, the centerpiece. If you if you if it went to two feet and it it cost you some space, you might be able to just bounce the entire thing uh, back on the uh, on towards the, the parking lot. Side. Pardon? Towards the parking lot. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty full reworking of the plan. So are we sure that that's important? Well, let me, let me just, I don't have, I have to get a copy of the plan in front of me. Sorry, I don't have that with me. Um, I will double check what that jog is. Yeah, it's approximately, there it is. I'll just scale it though. What I'm saying is it's about one foot eight or to two feet. But if you see what I was saying about the stair, by looking at that and, and the clearances so you don't come around the corner and fall one way or another. Um, and then you have clearance to move furniture. Again, this is not an elevator building. Um, so mm -hmm. we are talking about, you know, practicality in terms of landings um, that we want to maintain. So I didn't want to jog it in too much. That's why I couldn't bring the door. I mean, the door frame slightly recessed from the wall, but to bring it in much more than that, I'd be impinging on those stairs. It looks to me like the indentation is, uh, it looks especially on the, uh, it's probably the same, but on the uh, uh, Pearl Street side, it looks like it only goes back a foot from an exterior. A little bit more, here. but again, I'll, I just, everything is, you know, it, it's all pretty, Height. We don't have a lot of play. The only thing I could do is potentially move that wall towards the uh, parking lot a little bit to gain. Yeah. You could move wall. everything to the parking lot by right. a foot, and then you have an indentation yeah. to be comfortable to, to put in the deeper uh, recess. If you put in a deeper recess, would you uh, extend the canopy maybe so it would protect your stairs? There's some protection there. That, that plan is inaccurate. There's only one stair on the right. I don't know yeah, why. that's right. That's right. These I'm are sorry, these, so yeah, these are old plans, Dan. Yeah, I got to get the other one without the stair. You look at the side. rendering, though. The um, the canopy does appear to project. Oh, yeah. The canopy is going to extend over the stair. Okay. And over the windows, the first. Two. Not over, sorry? Are they going to go over the first set of windows that mirror the entry? The two yeah, if you go back to the elevation, the straight elevation, I think it. See, it doesn't not, match. Like, the, I didn't want that rendering, I think, was incorrect in terms of how far the can canopy is just straight on the over over the main entrance. Only on the high point on the top step. Okay. But it and is how many, how many units and how many are accessible and where are they at? They're in the lower level. In the parking lot, the access two. rooms. Yeah. So, how many units total? And eleven. Yeah, and two. Or how many accessible rooms? Two. Two. I can see why the uh, the corner on the uh, uh, southeast side is a little bit shorter. It's mm -hmm. not because of the the rooms. It's because whoever parks their car there <laughs> wants to have more space to back up to turn around and do a three point turn and then exit. And okay, that may be required somewhere too. But I notice they're all being put in. Uh, completely vertically against the Wilson Street house. It's not an, it's not angle parking at right. all. It's a, a 90 degree parking. And I don't know, that may be easier when you're trying to back out and then turn around to get out. Traffic people may have a different way of looking at things than, than we are. 
On the uh, the rear elevation, were those, um, yeah, that one, Aaron, were those grills? Those are mechanical grills? Yeah, we made them on Wilson and the rear. When you go back um, for, where are you talking? You're talking about, on, they're on Wilson. Yeah, the Wilson Street elevation. Right. Oh. Okay. Not on Pearl. Well, that'll work. Line with the mechanical rooms. Right, but in the rendering, I mean, they look a little too dark on the elevate the, the, the back elevation, so they'll blend in better as shown on the rendering. Yeah. Are there any other vents and stuff that are going to pop out that we don't see? They're going to see if you go back to the floor plans. Yeah. We'll show you where those are. If we could. Thanks, Aaron. So the unit at the top will have the vent right adjacent to that furnace, which is the square box in the upper right corner. Okay. You see that one? Right I do. Here. Yep. And then the other one, go 45 degree right there. Oh, nice. Yep. And then the only other one is right there. Right. So that'll be a big vertical trunk that then uh, they combine for the locations that we saw in the elevation. Yeah. No, they're just panels at each location. They're, they're just not, pan separate panels. It's not extended from floor to floor. Okay. Yeah, these are units that are dedicated to each apartment. Correct. I think they look pretty good, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I think we've, you know, addressed many of the concerns. The ones that are brought out tonight, um, I don't really see an issue with it. We do want to, you know, do a couple versions of the water table just to make sure we're not going, you yeah. know, proportionally it's in keeping um, as we look at it. Um, obviously, the perspective helped us. You know, but as far as the job goes, we'll we'll try to bring that in a little bit and then push towards the parking lot. Um, I think the, other than that, yeah, I think the use of the bracketry in the two recessed things are very effective uh, because I know, like Lee always says, don't make it look like a duplicate of the one that was there 130 years ago, and it's it's a nice compromise because they're stripped. The corners are. Uh, are, are stripped of any real uh, serious uh, uh, design, and yet the the bracketry to remind you of everything else along the block is there in the two center uh, periods. It's a, it's a good uh, it's a good mixture. I think the rhythm of the massing works well too. Yeah, and disguises yeah. the fact that it is a a large singular building in some measure. It's also a major asset to that neighborhood because that looks terrible to have that uh, huge open space on that corner. Um, oh yeah, so having that filled in is corner, be great. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you provided the rendering because that really yeah. does a, a, a tremendous um, job in displaying kind of how it does fit and uh, softens what appear to be rather harsh elevation views. Yes. If anyone knew the vendoring company, they were actually from Israel, just to let it, <laughs> the company who did it. Yeah. Their turnaround was very appreciative. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I think this looks much better and I agree with all of my fellow commissioners comments. I think this dresses the corner much better. It fits in with the neighborhood. It's going to be an asset. Um, I support the suggestions that were you know, offered today. Um, 
but I, I really, I really like this. Um, more than most new buildings I think I've seen recently. Now, if you go up the street, there are a lot of awnings on those west facing windows. <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. Helen. Yeah. They're fully awning. Yeah. I know in your earlier iteration, you had some sort of a, a projecting sunshade over the, uh, the windows. Got a little busy and not really. Yeah, I think that's, I prefer just a simplified front entrance one right yeah. now instead of yeah. once you start, you know. But there's a continuity to that block where they, they seem to like their, their, uh, uh, their awnings. You serve a purpose. Yeah. I think there's probably a temptation to have two sets of stairs go up uh, in a symmetrical manner. But when you consider who's going to be there, it just means you've got two sets of steps that have to be shoveled when it gets like Right. Uh, it makes more, more sense to have it on one side. You might let it overhang a little bit on the, on the uh, left side though, uh, because sometimes you'll have people waiting to get in there and you don't want to make it too narrow for the entrance. And that's obviously mis misleading in that it has a, a huge, um, it has a huge canopy put on top of it, which is, uh, as we know from- yeah, That was their one mistake on the rendering, the canopy got too extended. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure that you might want to make sure you have a, a generous uh, porch, if you will. Um, it's easier for people when they're waiting to get in. I mean, some of the homes on the old homes on uh, uh, State Street in particular, they sometimes have a, a bench uh, on the far side when it comes up and dead ends like that. And there'll, there'll be a platform that people can put their uh, uh, their briefcases and things like that on top of it, or they can sit on it waiting for a, a bus to come or, or a taxi to come, that type of thing. Um, it's easier to do it when you're doing it originally. Any thoughts on lighting, exterior lighting? The question, um, I mean, obviously we'd like to have a few coach lights at the front entrance, um, you know, to give that appearance. And then any security lighting, and then at the rear as well. Um, I wasn't necessarily looking at lighting on, on the Wilson side. Yeah but we could. You know, well, we yeah, you got a street light there. Sorry? You've got double lighting right there for the street light. Got a lot of street light right yeah. there. And also- Look on the block, you know, how the larger buildings were treated. Yeah, it's also wide open on the south side of uh, Wilson Street because the federal building, I think, right. is well lit in every direction for yeah. security purposes. So you may not need to, to do much mm -hmm. to the, the building on that south side or on the north side of Wilson. Please try to stay away from gooseneck lighting. No, we wouldn't. No, we do like stunts, you know, tight ports. Yeah, yeah. That gooseneck stuff is horrible, man. Yeah, this isn't a gooseneck building. No. <laughs> <laughs> now take a look at the other ones on the yeah the uh, block too. Just like we're saying, look at the the uh, the uh, the canopies, and you can take a look at the lighting as well. Make it reasonably compatible, but not necessarily identical. <laughs> Uh, 
I, I lost that, I lost uh, track of, we looked at awnings and then we're back at this elevation in the canopy. And Jack, why did you just stay look at the other canopies? Because we don't really have canopies on the street. We have awnings, right? What well, did you we, have, we have awnings. I meant to say awnings. It's uh, Oh, okay. okay. Uh, you know, there's a tradition of an overhang. And okay. uh, if we All can right. call it that way. I, the only thing I was saying is when you're building the um, staircase to go up, that uh, sometimes you want to make it as wide as you can so that people who are carrying packages or people who are waiting for a, a taxi to come or that type of thing or waiting for somebody to visit. Yeah, sometimes if you put a, a, a bench there that that is on the dead end of it, uh, it can be... A, a very, a very gracious thing for people who are on their way in or on their way out. Yeah, a little more generous top landing. Yeah. You know. It's a really nice idea. Then you want to play, play around with the, uh, uh, with the canopy that's on top to try and not have it uh, uh, under the snow the, to the same extent or under the rain as the rest of it. So it'd be nice if they matched, which might mean a little more overhang, both left and right. I don't think that would trouble me, a larger overhang. Yeah, it might not go all the way over the, yeah. the, yeah. the, the okay. window as it shows here, but it would, would go a little bit more, it'd be a little more generous. Yeah, it could go onto the, the pilaster between the door opening and the window, mm -hmm. extending out a bit more. It may well have a, a light underneath it as well. I, I think you've done a good job with it. No, I think it looks good. It's, again, it reestablishes the corner which is uh, yep. desperately needed there. So we're scheduled, um, I believe, to go back to planning for the January meeting. Um, I don't think we got in for December one. And uh, so timing wise to come back to you, whether it's, you know, formally that would be with Aaron letting us know it needs to be, I assume, after we get planning board approval or? Right, would... so planning board will need to initiate um, seeker. And um, once your seeker review has been completed and um, planning board takes formal action, then the HRC can take formal action. If I can mention one other thing that we haven't discussed on this corner, uh, there's a number of places in the city, the center square, I'm thinking of one on, uh, on Hamilton Street, uh, there's another one on uh, uh, Dove Street, where you know it's always going to be a fence, it's always going to shield a backyard, and putting a fence there, and we haven't looked at the fence, if you can somehow put a, uh, a brick uh, wall there, it really makes a big difference uh, as opposed to a wooden fence. And, uh, you know, it might be cement block with a, a brick veneer. I'm not sure. I know there's cost considerations, but particularly on the, uh, on the front, uh, adjacent to the front where there's clearly going to be a permanent uh, fence or wall of some kind, it, it would be, I, I think, very helpful to the whole block if it, was masonry as opposed to wood or wire or, or whatever. Are you talking about the north fence? Uh, the west. I'm talking about the west side in particular. It's a pain in the neck on the on the south side because you've got all the uh, you've got the hill. But in this one here, you do show something looks to me like a board fence, and I would tend to think that a. Uh, a masonry uh, fence would look look pretty classy. I 
I mean, this is um, this is a fencing that we've used on other, you know, in Arbor Hill and then on Morton and some other sites. I don't know in terms of doing a maze, a brick a brick wall there. Well, everything's yeah. brick from one end of the block to the other end of the block on yeah. Livingston Avenue. And it is a it's a it's a four foot um, metal fence, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Like picket style. Correct. Yeah. As I said, the standard. If the company is elite, we use you know with a little square at the top, four foot high. Um, I can get the sample catalog cut to you. Um, but it maybe looks when you come, it maybe look, when you come back, bring back some photos yeah, of the existing it, ones yeah. that you've mentioned. It, it would look very suburban. Cool. I think alternatively, you could consider masonry piers at each end of it. That's what we did at RSS uh, Clinton, and then just infilled it. Yeah, something like that. And that's what I believe they did it, or whatever. Port Orange, I think. Too. I mean, I, yeah, they're all over. Did on Madison Avenue. We've done them on other locations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gives you something to play with for the uh, with the uh, the base course of the building and how that kind of works with the fence to mm -hmm. kind of reach out there and stake your claim on that piece of land. Great homage. You know, usually when we see something like this, there's a long-term plan that you're going to wind up be putting a, a, you'll be putting a building there. And I don't think that's what the plan is for the building, that it'll always be open space. Um, so when you have uh, a fence that's wooden, it implies that it's a temporary type of thing. If you have some masonry somewhere, maybe a compromise of uh, pillars that are bra of, of brick or something like that, it shows a permanence as opposed to where we were stuck with the vacant lot and had to do something with it. Is there a landscaping associated with that hillside behind the fence? On Wilson, I'd have to look at the site plan again if Dan put any shrubs behind that fence. Yeah. I don't know, Aaron, is that? Can you go back to Dan's? Site plan. There we go. Looks like he's got a couple of big picnic benches. How are those transformed? Yeah. They're they're pick, um, part of the um, I believe part of the development plan review. Um, there's a requirement for um, usable space for the tenants, so I think there are picnic tables. Right now, he doesn't have any shrubs shown on in yeah. front, which. sort of towards the easternmost section, there's some grass area there. Right where your arrow, or I'm sorry, that's my arrow. Um, yeah, <laughs> right in that area. Looks like you'd have a hard time getting from the top level to the bottom level there. It's pretty steep. Yeah. But it would be nice if you had some kind of a wall there, maybe even with a, a door in the middle, it could be a, a really unique place. Courtyard. Yeah, a little courtyard. Just give us some thought. I don't think it's something we want to cast in stone for a requirement, but it might be a nice opportunity. All right. Well, with all of that said, um, Dan, do you have enough information to chew on? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have anything that they'd like to raise or suggestions to offer, Dan? Aaron, do we have anybody in the uh, 
the general public that wants to make we any? Do not. No, not tonight. Okay. Is there a formal, is, I forgot how this works, Aaron, in terms of the public? Is there a session of where they speak at the le at the net at the actual meeting since these are not formal meetings? Right. So once um, you you'll need to submit a certificate of appropriateness application in the master form. Um, you can do that with the planning board submission if you want. Yeah. Um, once we um, have a formal submission, mm -hmm. um, planning board has made a decision. Uh, we will hold a public hearing where we'll take public comment. And as part of that, I will also be sending out um, notices to all the property owners that are within 250 square feet of the property to notice them of the meeting um, and their ability to either make written comment or comment in person. Thanks. All the plans will be um, available on the planning website as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we willing to uh, let Dan go? <laughs> I think so. Appreciate that. Release him from this uh, theater. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank All you. Right. Welcome, Dan. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Aaron, is there anything else to come before the commission? I know we talked before everyone else was on about uh, visiting the property on uh, North Pearl Street. Right. Um, so I've a couple of you have commented. Um, I sent out a doodle poll yesterday for 52 North Pearl Street for the site visit. Um, so if you didn't see it in your inbox, just make sure to check your junk box. Um, but for next Thursday, um, Chris Pratt is available to meet with um, any of the members of um, who are available and wish to go. Um, it's not required, so um, it's at your own discretion if you want to go look at the site or not. Um, but, but avoiding a, uh, a, a, a quorum. Correct, right. Yeah. So um, I did tell him that um, I can't have more than four members at the site at one time. So it may be um, in shifts rather than all at once, um, depending on how many people we have available to go. So if you could um, take time to just look at and fill out what times you are available, you just have to select um, their hour slots starting at 9, um, 9 a.m. going to 3 p.m. So if you have availability, just let me know and I will um, set up uh, shifts for the site visit. That's next Thursday, not tomorrow. Correct, next Thursday, December 10th. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I have a question, Erin. Yes. The, um, the discussion about changing the work, uh, making workshops. Yep. Is that happening? And is there a schedule? And can let me describe it a little better. Yep. The schedules were in the meeting. Let me just pull them up because I have it up here. Give me one second. Um, I don't know if everybody even, I don't know that Jen and Erin were there when you know, um, yeah, just give me one. And I'm going to have to go in two minutes. Okay. Um, so <laughs> while I pull it up, um, okay. we're, we had decided. Um, can you all see that? Yep. Right. Okay. But this is the 2019 schedule. So okay. I didn't, I thought this was. A, Sorry, this Put is in there in error. This is the 2020 schedule. I apologize. 2020? Um, 2020? 2021. I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't know what year it is anymore. 
2021. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it is so we are discussing having the first meeting of the month be a meeting and a workshop. Um, we to kind of fall in line with what both the planning board and BZA do. Um, it's um, the workshop would be a meeting where the commission could review um, any applications, discuss if there's any inf further information that's needed um, or ways that the application could be revised to be more in line with the historic resource overlay criteria. Um, the workshops, um, there's no public comment and there's generally no comment from the applicant is a meeting to allow you all to have an internal discussion as to um, whether you know the application is complete or you need more information to make a better decision. And then that application would come back at the second meeting of the month for a public hearing um, and an action from the commission. So kind of like a concept review that we do now for app larger applications, um, but we're also keeping that first meeting as a the option of having a public hearing or a public meeting um, in case there's projects where, um, you know, maybe they miss the public hearing um, the second meeting of the month and they need to come back for a decision at that first meeting. Um, so it might give them a little bit extra time to produce documents or information. Um, and if we do see that it works better as having a workshop as the first meeting and then the hearing as the second meeting um, to be, you know, compatible with the other land use boards, then um, we have discussed just going to that schedule of a workshop meeting. So, um, but I will change this. This is the new, what was in the packet is the new schedule for 2021. Perfect. <laughs> you got I, think this, right. <laughs> yeah. I think that sounds like a great idea. I, um, as long as it doesn't delay applicant Right, and that's um, approvals too much. Well, and that's um, Chris Benter. We're trying it this way because he was concerned that if we do get rid of, you know, the meeting option for that first um, first meeting of the month, that you know, there may be applicants that our the application is easy enough to approve without requiring them to come back to the commission. Um, right. and, or, you know, they've received approval or they've received comments. It might just be easy, to, you know, easy for them to come once and be done. So, um, but if, you know, we're not seeing that issue, then we may just go to a workshop for the first Wednesday and a hearing for the second Wednesday, so. Or if uh, perhaps it works within the workshop context, or perhaps somebody could assist you outside of that if it's appropriate, but reviewing the preliminary applications, reviewing the applications you get to make sure that they're complete, because we spend a lot of time on things where sometimes they're just not complete, there's not enough information. Well, and that's, you know, that that is one of the ways, and you know, sometimes it they're coming before you because you know, we push applicants to a point where right. you know, we've exhausted our ability right. to um, request further information. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's having them come before you is, you know, necessary, <laughs> and necessary to, to kind of show that, yes, this information is needed. Um, but and, you know, in some cases, that's how planning board um, and BTA also work, where this is, the workshop does function as a way for the boards to say, you know, further information is needed. 
and you need to clarify or provide this for us to make a decision on your application. So. And, you know, we, we may be able, we can try it and see and amend it to make it work for the commission. So um, we're kind of, yeah. we can do, you know, try, try different things and see how it works. Um, and, and to support you. I mean, again, if it's hard, if, I mean, I understand that you <laughs> can receive a lot of uh, angst from applicants and therefore et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if there are any other ways for us in this new structure to support you up front, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, one of the other things, um, the workshops are also used for um, topic discussion. So it may not, you know, we have either a light month or we have no um, applications. Um, we've done it previously, but we can also set you know, topic discussions, either, um, you know, internally or have somebody come and, you know, do a workshop with us um, or present um, information to us, so. Maybe um, one good topic, and I'd ask if it's already appropriate at our next meeting, if uh, maybe Kara or Ricky Joy or someone can talk about uh, what's going on at Kenwood which is probably one of our most significant resources. And I know the city's been up there over there boarding up windows. Yep. Okay. So that would be good to kind of get an update and see if there's any engagement that's appropriate for us in, in the efforts of development or the stabilization efforts. That was my conversation with Ellen this or Aaron this morning. As I mean, Great. that's one of the most significant uh, complexes, not just one building we have in the whole city of Albany and we should mm -hmm. be aware of it. Yeah, and I would, you know, um, as we are going into um, 2021, if there are topics, um, feel free to forward them to me. Um, you know, topics, trainings, or, you know, anything like that or presentations that you would like. Um, and we can either start yeah, kind of reaching out to, um, other organizations or um, staff members who you'd like to hear from and start organizing those and getting some of those set up for the new year. I put on the list uh, asking, he works pretty hard, but then he'd have to come at night again, is asking uh, Rick Joy to come and talk to us about some of the vacant building mm -hmm. initiatives that he's undertaking relative to code compliance and particularly the vacant buildings. It kind of starts in the discussion of emergency demos. And then as you know, Aaron, he's becoming much more proactive. Right. And uh, we'd probably all be very glad to hear that. He'd all, and also it'd be nice to remind him because we'd have the opportunity as Jack always reminds us, can somebody document the buildings before they tear them down? But yeah. that's, that's an aside. And Sam yeah. Wells, yep, Sam Wells and I have discussed um, on multiple occasions having, um, having him come present you know, at least present to give you updates um, on what he's doing and, you know, where he stands with his vacant building program. I'd like to see uh, we had an earlier conversation with, uh, with Amy that um, I, I remember asking a couple of years ago, which buildings are most in danger that are of historical importance? And Historic Albany had a list of like St. John's Church and so on and so forth. And there are all these enormous million dollar problems, which discourage the hell out of everybody. But I really think maybe for 2021, we should have a list of, of, of historic properties that are so endangered that they will, uh, will have an effect not only on a block that maybe they're a member of, and we, we know what happened with the uh, McPherson Terrace, uh, the loss affects not the loss of one building, but the loss of an entire block and a neighborhood. Uh, I'm looking at, at Kenwood, which is obviously on a larger scale, but there are so many smaller but highly significant buildings that would be 
just awful to lose and would cost no more than a quarter million or maybe even half of that. That if we could identify them, we could could really activate our, our best efforts to get the uh, landlords in that may or may not be uh, in error. They may just have uh, difficulties, publicity, but we really need to, uh, I hate to drive by the same building for eight years in a row and find out that it's just one building, but there's a problem with it. And it affects all the buildings, for example, around Washington Park because of one building. And I think we need to find targets that are not million dollar targets, but to find some that are far more reasonable that would make a major difference in the policy of how the city ad addresses uh, some of these problems. This is more than just uh, uh, building. And one thing I found that I'm positive uh, on is that we have uh, with the, uh, uh, with the new technology, we can go up and find out where a leak is in a building before it becomes a major problem. Uh, because for many years, if there was a collapsing roof, you didn't find out about it until it was too late. You know, but this is a different world. You can send up the, the electronic critters and they'll take a picture and you can see what the problem is. But, you know, dealing with huge buildings that cost millions of dollars we can't always deal with that. And there maybe, hopefully there will be a way, but we also have to deal with some of the smaller ones that can destroy an entire block or an entire neighborhood. And we, that would be a good priority for uh, 2021. I was just thinking maybe the January meeting, we could, our workshop, we could really see if we could prioritize, kind of develop our own work plan kind of for these other topics and prioritize and I think a good place to start, Aaron, tell me what you think, is in the preservation plan, they, they were pretty comprehensive. Now, they wanted to get rid of us and have you do everything. But besides those items, <laughs> um, I think there was, you know, there was some pretty good guidance in there as to how to go about some of these. Maybe we could yeah. go back to the plan and see what of those recommendations made sense. And that even gives it more legitimacy if we ask for any other support because it's coming out of the plan that we paid for. Mm -hmm. and I can, Aaron, if you want, I'll work on you with you on that if you want for okay. January, going yeah, back to the plan and extracting from that. That would be very good. I, I don't think we should find out that Kenwood is being boarded up and finding out indirectly and after the fact. Right, uh, right. We should know when these problems are occurring before they're that, that serious. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that was um, that was it for me. Uh, but yeah, if you do have any any topics or anything you wanna, you know, are looking to discuss next year, let me know, and we'll start. Is there any <clears throat> Do we have a meeting two weeks from now, Aaron? Um, potentially. I did send out the notice for it. I'm waiting. Um, I the apple the applicant did tell me that they may be revising the application depending on some information that they're waiting on. Um, so we may have a meeting. We may not. It depends on um, some information. So. Oh. No Christmas parties this year, huh? No Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> no Annika party either. Uh, <laughs> only Zoom gatherings. Yeah, Zoom parties. Oh, Zoom holiday parties. <laughs> um, but yep, so uh, you can all um, also let me know, take a look at the doodle poll and let me know if you would like to attend on Thursday, next Thursday, the 10th for 52 North Pearl Street as well. Okay. And it's okay. good to hear Norman Rice's voice again on our meetings. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear yours too, yeah. everybody else's. Yeah. Yes, Norman. Very uh, good. Very good. Okay. Well, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Uh, I second that. Second. 
Our right, right. Norman was supposed to second it. Oh, okay. I'll second that. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. All, right. All those in favor say thank you, Norman. Thank you, Norman. Thank you, Norman. <laughs> um, and, uh, Good night, uh, all. I'm so, I'm so glad to be with you all. Uh, we're glad to. Well, we're definitely glad to have you. Very good. All right. Well, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Yep. Good night. Well. Good night. Good night. Right. Bye bye. You well. Bye bye. Good night, Norman. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>